Good morning, everyone. My name is Sam Mergel. I am one of the interns here at Fellowship of Faith. Thank you so much for coming in today and everyone that's watching on the live stream. If you guys want to go ahead and stand up, we'll go ahead and get ready for the service today.
FOF. Guys, so good to see you. Welcome to week two of in-person worship, right? Give it up for that. Thanks for coming out. Those of you who are gathered in this room, it is so good to see you. Those of you who are in Coffee House, we hope you're enjoying the vibe out there. We're glad to be together as one body here, even in two rooms. And those of you joining us on live stream, we are so glad that you're tuning in today or maybe catching us and recording afterwards. But thank you, whether you're coming here like just in the flesh or whether you're still going to be staying at home and watching us it's just awesome being one body in different ways. Thank you guys for being a part of this. Hey, you go ahead and take a seat. And uh, I want to tell you a little bit about things that are happening today and in the life of Fellowship of Faith right now. Uh, let's give it up for Barbie, all right? Hey, Barbie, all right? So for, it feels like an age now, but man, we've been talking about this thing called first wave, this, this idea of this, this, this opportunity we think God is sending our way. And we've sent out videos and we've sent out emails and we've done the living room meetings and hopefully you've got a chance to cue into this. If you're new to what I'm talking about, you're like, uh huh, go to our webpage, go to fellowshipoffaith.org, tune into our first wave webpage and you'll get information there. But guys, today is the day that we get to meet as a congregation. 12 noon after the service, right in this room, we get to gather and just really try to discern what God is doing here in our midst as a church and decide, is this the wave that we are going to surf as a church? So I want to encourage you to come and be a part of it. You know, whether you're new to Fellowship of Faith or whether you've been coming from the beginning, whether you're a member or not, whether you're here in person, or whether you're live streaming. Join us at noon today. Hear more about it. We'll share with you how this project will unfold, the timelines, the process, and then together we'll pray through it and go, God, is it here? And give our voice to whether we think this is the right wave to seize. So make sure to be a part of that. 
hey, um, all kinds of new things happening here at Fellowship of Faith as we kind of figure out new normal together. Um, you know, coffee bar, full serve, children's ministry, still closed right now, but Boulder PM is meeting this evening. Big shout out. Yeah, woo. All right, woo. Big shout out to all of you who have been supporting us through this time. You know, I never like to get into the comparison game, and I don't think it's healthy, but there are so many churches that are financially struggling, I mean, like hanging on by a thread through this, and we got to be praying for them and figuring out how to help them, but that has not been the case for Fellowship of Faith, because you who call FOF home, guys, you've been doing it, you're bringing it, you've been keeping us going, and not just afloat, but strong and forward. I said this last week, I'm going to say it again, big shout out to all of you who have been making that happen. I mean this sincerely. Rock on. Rock on. Hey, I mean this. Keep it up. Keep up the good work. We're not passing offering plates through this whole season right now. But as you leave the doors today, if you're kind of one of these, like, I like to drop it in person kind of people, that's awesome. You will find offering buckets at the corners of each door. There's envelopes and pens there. Take the pen home. We don't want to wash these things, all right, if you end up using one. And you can do that. But, you know, the giving platforms remain the same. Five ways to give. You see it on the screen. Our live stream. Streamers, five ways to give. You can keep giving online. You can keep giving text to give. You can set up the auto bank transfers, all that kind of good stuff. We encourage you to keep up the good work. Thank you for that. And uh, yeehaw, we'll keep moving forward full steam ahead. Those of you who are here in person, you're going to notice that we don't have connection cards. We're not doing any of this kind of passing stuff. But you know, the elders here, they want to be praying for you. We've been talking about this at our elders' meetings. They actually want to be praying for you. Do you ever, like, actually come across someone that wants to pray for you? I mean, everyone is willing to pray for you. Like, could you imagine going up and say, hey, would you pray for me? And they go, no, nah, man. <laughs> you, you know, it's just like, it, it just doesn't work that way, right? But often don't we do it begrudgingly for others? It's like, I'll fit it into my schedule, you know? They want to pray for you. So how can they know? Well, you can always reach out to us directly. But what I encourage you to do is go to our website, fellowshipoffaith.org, and go to the Contact Us page. And right there on the Contact Us page, you'll see a place where you can enter your name, your email and phone number, select which is the best way to get a hold of you and enter in whatever prayer request that you have. And our elders are going to be getting that and be praying on your behalf. So take advantage of it, whether you're live streaming from home, whether you're here in person. Let's keep praying as a church. Amen to that? Amen. All right. Well, another first this past week, virtual Bible boot camp. Never did this before. Never thought about this before. Gwen Johnson, our next-gen director, in this, this kind of strange hand that life has dealt us this year, had figured out how to do Bible boot camp from home virtually, and she put together a highlight reel along with Andrew of kind of what this looked like this past week. Just want to show it to you here today.
a second cause we all need Jesus You ain't alone man, we all got a reason To call on him in all different seasons It's hard to find someone you can really trust Harder to find someone with unconditional love That was awesome Seriously, big shout out to Gwen Johnson over there who made this happen. Fun stuff, fun stuff. You know, through this whole strange shelter in place COVID world that we live in, you know, we think of all these people who have been continuing to kind of put themselves, and I mean this sincerely, in harm's way, exposing themselves to lots of other people through this whole thing to kind of keep life running and keep life running well. You know, I I think of people anywhere from like just custodians who are doing the schlock work behind the scenes, touching everyone's germs and coming in contact with it to make sure things are clean for the rest of us. I think of people who are working at like, you know, Walmart and stores, these cashiers who are often making minimum wage or a little bit more, you know, and and, and kind of exposing themselves to, to hundreds if not thousands of people regularly. I I think of people that we often take for granted, like utility workers. I was talking to one man after the nine o'clock who used to be like a ComEd lineman, who, you know, they're they're still out there kind of doing stuff to make sure that not only hospitals, but our homes have power and, and, and are working and internet. Could you imagine COVID without internet? Oh my gosh, right? It would have been worse than the Black Plague. But there's a cross section of people today A cross-section of people today that just as a congregation, we do want to bring special attention to and really thank. And these are the healthcare workers. These are the doctors and the nurses and the CNAs. These are the people who are working in the nursing homes. These are the paramedics and firefighters and police officers who are often the first responders. And there's quite a number of them here at Fellowship of Faith. And Marian Heisel, um, one of our board of directors who just does some amazing things with health and wellness ministry here at Fellowship of Faith, has just been like, Dave, we, we got to just kind of recognize these people. And we thought, you know, let's, let's do it today. And they can't all be here today. Some are working. Some are actually on shift right now, but there's a number who are gathered with us, and we're just going to invite you forward right now. I'm going to not name you all by name. Just come on up. If I'm speaking to you, and even if you're hearing this for the first time, you're like, what? You know, you're a doctor, you're a nurse, you're a CNA, you're working in a nursing home, you're a first responder. Walk while I talk. I'm looking at you. I see you're here. Come on up. Come on up. And let's give these folks a hand because you know what? They've been ah, awesome stuff. Hi, everybody. Uh, I am Marianne Heisel, and I have the extreme pleasure of being the health and wellness uh, nursing director here at Fellowship of Faith. It it was always a dream of mine to sort of bring our faith to the community as as well as a bunch of health and wellness uh, that we can. I also partner with uh, Avic Aurora um, um, Congregational Outreach Program with Chaplain Sam Martinez, and we are able to bring a bunch of variety of different kind of programs here. But today, I really want to just honor some of these people that are just phenomenal. They have worked tirelessly to help keep each of us safe. And I'm honored to be a part of their crew, as well as, um, you know, to be able to recognize them today. So I'm just going to hand the mic and just sort of mention who you are and what you do, and then I'll come back. Uh, I'm Ron Schutte. I work in the lab at the Northwestern Hospital very important with all of the lab works that we've been having. I'm Emily. I'm a nurse at a pediatrician's office. (laughs) I'm Lexi. I'm a firefighter paramedic. Uh, I'm Christina. I'm a police officer. I'm Marge Mazur. I'm a registered nurse. Thanks, guys. Um, Also part of our team, um, Steve Peterson is a firefighter. He needed to leave this afternoon. He was here at the first service. And Bill Chanchita, he's also a firefighter here. Uh, Other people that are on this um, team is Melissa Carlson. She's an ICU nurse at Northwestern um, here in McHenry. And Chad Wolford, he's the director of Sheltering Oaks in Woodstock, the nursing director. And uh, Mary Wolf, who's also an RN at Good Shepherd Hospital. 
So once again, you guys have done so much. This has changed all of our lives, this whole COVID thing. I actually was retired and got called back to, uh, and what was I thinking? But when you see Dave's service on the first wave and being called into what to serve, uh, you just go where God leads you. And he led me back to work with um, employees that are exposed to COVID and that are um, or sick with COVID. So my perspective is 100% COVID, so um, that's a whole new world for me and for all of us. But um, I know Ron with the lab and trying to get all those lab tests out has to be tremendous. Working in pediatrician's office, being a paramedic, being a police officer, and being a nurse here, it, we've all, you all have done your part. And it's been an honor and a privilege to work with you guys side by side as colleagues. So please just give a good round of applause to them. Thank you guys, thank you very much. Um, we do have just a little token here, I'm gonna go back here. And um, it's just a pin, and basically what it says, it's just an appreciation in so many ways, but hands that serve and hearts that care. So, thank you so much. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Three times, thank you so much. <laughs> thank you so much. I gave it to him earlier. <laughs> I only have so many, sorry. So, Dave, if you'd like to, we just want to have a prayer over everybody, so maybe we can spread guys, out a little bit. Actually, yeah, yeah, this is what I'd like to do, and do, yeah, come on a little bit more center if that's okay. I feel like they're oh, on top of you here, but that's all right. You know, we talk about the importance of praying, and, and sometimes I think we can get into the trap that we think it's like the church leader's job to pray for the church, which it is, but it's also all of our jobs, isn't it? And so what I want you to do, what I want you guys to do, whether you're live stream, but especially here in person, is I want you to adopt someone who's standing up here today. From Marianne at this end down to Marge at this end. Who wants to pray for Marianne today? Put it up. Come on. Put it up. Who's going to pray for Marianne? All right. Who wants to adopt Ron? Who's going to pray for Ron? Pray for Ron today. Who's going to pray for Emily today? All right. Fantastic. We got Lexi right here. Who's going to pray for Lexi? Okay. We got Tina Noyes right here. Who's going to pray for Tina? And we got Marge Mazer at the end. All right, fantastic. Today, I want you to remember these people in your prayer and just bask them in your prayer and make it happen. Let's pray together now as a congregation for them and everyone who's serving in this field. Lord, we come before you on behalf of these people who are serving you. Because that's what they're doing. They are serving you. You went to the sick. You went to the broken. You went to the unclean. You went to the lepers and you touched them. You went to them who were, to those who society was afraid of, afraid of catching it. And you ministered to them, and that's what these people do. Lord, I pray that you protect them. I pray that you protect them from getting sick, and you protect their families. I pray that in those moments when they have to step into harm's way, that they go with your courage and compassion and filled with your grace, bringing not just physical healing, but hope, light, comfort, and joy to those who are God afflicted and afraid. Lord, when they're tired, give them those extra boosts of energy. When they're worn down, just in soul, the perseverance to go on. Surround them with people that will lift them up Lord, as always, you, the great physician, we pray your healing upon all who are sick and upon our world today. Glory be your name. Amen. One more time. Thank you.
So I don't know how to do that. How about, how about you? Do we have any surfers in the house today? We have one. All right. We have one. Let's welcome Scott DeGelder on stage here because he's going to take this over because that's the master right there, you know? I don't know how to do that. I, I am like one of these born and raised Midwestern kind of people. And even though I've been to California and I've been to Hawaii and I've been to the Caribbean and I've been to Florida and I've been to Lake Michigan when the water gets big, all right? I don't know how to do it. We got a mocker over here. I don't know how. But man, I want to. You know, I didn't grow up like like a two years old going to the beach going, wow, if I could only surf. But, you know, I did grow up in a house with teenage girls who watch way too many surfer movies. And I, 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 I'm not too proud, all right? I dig those teenage girl surfer movies, all right? And I see that surfing kind of going on. And, you know, you see the water, like, d does it not just look so much fun? Like, or have you ever, you know, someone's like, no, <laughs> you know, in the back. It does to me. It looks just like, it just looks exhilarating. Have you ever been out to a coast or when the water's been big and you see people out playing in it and riding it, and especially when they make it look so natural and so easy? And you see that combination of only what I can describe as terror meets excitement, like the best things in life often are. Having been to some of those places, I, I see that kind of thing, and it's just like, I would love to be able to do it. No, maybe I'm never moving to Hawaii and making it a way of life, but those times when I visited and I'm kind of sitting there on the beach, no clue what's going on, trying to get out there on my little paddle board, you know, it, it just... It does something for me. It just looks cool. I kid you not, mocker. I went to college in Valparaiso, Indiana. And there was a guy I became friends with who grew up in essentially Valparaiso, Indiana. And he was a surfer. And you know where he used to surf? Valparaiso, Indiana. Or close enough, because when you get a Northeastern coming out of Lake Michigan, the swells would hit 10 to 12 feet. He'd get on the wetsuit. He would get his board. He had like this, this Volkswagen Beetle, like, you know, total classic with all like the Pacific stickers on it, like, you know, the, the yin-yang stuff and, you know, and all the Ron John stuff kind of all over it. And he'd strap his surfboard to the car and people like be driving by and you like kind of look at this guy going out to the breaks at the Indiana sand dunes and he would actually ride them. And you know what it's kind of taught me? I don't care where you live. God will send you a wave. I don't care where, where, where you think life has brought you. God will send you a wave. God will send you waves. Yeah, I'm talking to you. Each of you here, God will send waves. Waves, because what I've found is that God likes to make waves. And think about that. Because so often, I think, we think of God as someone who likes to still waves. A God who likes to take the tumultuous waters and make them calm and serene. You know, we even read Bible stories like this. I want to I share this story with you today. It comes out of Mark chapter 4. It is totally worth reading. It's even more worth memorizing. And it says, that day evening came, and Jesus said to his disciples, hey, I want to go to the other side of the lake. And leaving the crowd behind, they took him along just as he was in the boat. And it says, a furious squall came up, and the waves broke over the boat so that it was nearly swamped. I'm curious, have you ever been like in big water? Like big water when it's like it's not fun anymore. <laughs> and you're like, oh, what did we get ourselves into here? You ever been on a cruise? 
out on a smaller boat. It doesn't even have to be big water like an ocean or what we'd call a sea or even the middle of Lake Michigan. But have you ever been out in water and it starts to come up? I remember this one instance. It was my dad and I. We were 10 years old. We were at Boy Scout camp in Oxford, Wisconsin, of all places. This lake would probably be constituted as the Oxford Puddle. But it was big to me and we were out there. And something weird happened that day. You gotta know this about me, I don't like fishing. I would rather do just about anything than fish. I would rather have to take fish hooks out of my own skin than sit in a hot boat in a 90 degree day and fish, okay? That's just me, but the fishing was great. We were putting the line in the water and you would catch a fish and another fish would eat that fish and you would just like pull it out. You would like spit in the water and the fish were jumping out. I kid you not, it was like fisherman's delight. The fish were everywhere, which meant our focus was in the water and not up here. And we were at most maybe 300 yards in the middle of this lake. And I saw something happen in weather that I have never seen since. Have you ever heard the phrase, the clouds rolled in? Now see, maybe I'm just naive, but I always thought that was a metaphor. I witnessed clouds literally rolling like waves on top of themselves, tumbling, coming in and coming in fast, and we were in the middle of the lake. You ever have a moment when you look up and you notice everyone who was once around you has gone away? And here we are in the middle of this lake, and then it hit. The sky opened. And I'm not talking rain like this. I'm talking rain like this, pushing us further into the lake. It, the boat started doing a 360. You know, I'm talking like the eight-foot rowboat here. You know what I mean? And here we are, I'm this 10-year-old kid, and I'm out with my dad, and the lifeguards are like waving on the shore, trying to get us to come in. Have you ever been in the middle, middle of big water, going, oh my gosh, the disciples are out in the lake. And it's bigger than Oxford, Wisconsin. And the storm sets in. Big water starts coming in. So much that the waves start swamping over the boat and they think they're going to drown. And I love how the story goes because look at what the disciples say to Jesus. He's in the stern. He's sleeping on a cushion because really, why wouldn't you? And the disciples woke him and they said to him, teacher, don't you care if we drown? And it says he got up and rebuked the wind and said to the waves, Quiet. Be still. And the wind died down. And it was completely calm. He got up. And he looked at the wind and he said to the waves, Quiet. Be still. And the wind died down. And it was completely calm. And even now, as I read this story, doesn't it fill you with just kind of a sense of the wind died down? And it was completely calm. We see God as a God, don't we, who speaks into the storms of life? to make the water still and calm and serene. It's some of the most treasured, amazing images of God and stories of the Bible, isn't it? This God who can speak into the raging sea of our life and bring something calm and still how we latch on to that image. But I think we do God a disservice sometimes by focusing so much on that image that we fail to see the Bible gives us other images of God as well. One of the coolest things about my daughter Reagan being home from college against her will from 
COVID close downs and everything else is us being together more and her being divorced from her spiritual community at school, which she developed and hungry for Bible study and kind of really for the first time getting to do like a Bible study together, one-to-one -one parents. If you've never done this with your children, I've made the mistake of letting 18 years of my life go by with my daughter of never doing this. And I've loved these past three to four months where we just take a book and it's just her and I and we talk through it and we got through revelation because well that's not stuff and why not start there and we're like now what do we do and we started doing genesis and we're like oh that got boring so we moved on to job and we find ourselves in the midst of job and i hope you're liking it honey i'm loving it and going through it again. But you know, it's interesting that it's been striking me as we've been reading Job together, you get these other senses, these other images, because here is this, this man named Job who is in the storms of life. And the images that Job starts to talk about are not images of a God speaking into the storm to make it calm. No, no, let me just share this one passage out of Job 9 with you. God's wisdom is profound. His power is vast. Who has resisted him and come out unscathed? He moves mountains without their knowing it and overturns them. He shakes the earth from its place and makes its pillars tremble. He speaks to the sun and it does not shine. He seals off the lights of the stars. He alone stretches out the heavens and treads on the waves of the sea. We've all lived long enough to see the pictures of tsunamis. I mean big water. Trembling the foundations of the earth and creating the waves. This image Job gets not of a God who says quiet and be still, but shaking the very foundations and plates of the earth itself to make waves of proportions we can't even dream. God, the water walker. God, the one who treads the waves. God, who does not still the storm, but charges into those big swells and rides on top of them. It's a very different image of God isn't it? A very different image of God from quiet. Be still. And yet both are true. The Bible is loaded with paradox, with tensions, giving us this picture of God over here and simultaneously giving us this picture of God over there and inviting us to hold them both at the same time, preventing us from jumping into one single perspective and making that the totality of the image of God we create in our mind. Let me ask you today, when you think of God, do you think of God more as one who is here to rescue you from drowning in the sea? Or do you think of God more as one who is riding the waves saying, come, follow me? It's the first, isn't it? I bet it is. I bet it is for most of us. I bet it's the first. I bet our thinking on God and our approach to God is the approach to say, God, save me. Save me because I'm drowning. Save me because it's scary. Save me because it's big. Lord, make it calm. Make it still. Save me. Rescue me from this place and bring me to something that's quiet and peaceful and serene. Make no mistake, praise God when he does. But how often of our approach with God is it to take us out of something rather than to charge it? And with that fear meets exhilaration, ride it with him. To not get safely to the seashore, but to surf the waves that God is sending with the joy and power and exhilaration of a God who loves. Big water, which image of God do you hold today? I think we, as churches, have often done God a disservice and have often created a false image of God by focusing so much on the one that we have forgotten the other. 
But more and more what I've been realizing, and as I reflect over the course of my life with God, I realize God is a God who loves big water. God is a God who loves to ride the waves. God is like one of these crazy friends in a surf movie. It's like you're watching Point Break or something like that, charging the 90-foot swells. I was watching this Netflix documentary because, let's face it, what else do we do, right? I was watching this Netflix documentary about these people who are seeking this big water, these people who are off the coast of Portugal. I wish I remember the name. This doesn't help you, does it? But they were off the coast of Portugal, and this guy on this jet ski bringing people out into these 90-foot swells. Can you imagine water that big? I'm going to ride this 10-story building. What's this, 30 feet? Can you imagine? Can you imagine a wave three times the size of this top peak? And some fool on a jet ski going into it saying, hey, hop on, I'll pull you out, go ride it with me. Welcome to Job 9, Yahweh, the wave rider. <laughs> Make no mistake, God, God makes waves. So often I think we find ourselves confused. Lord, you're upsetting the apple cart here. I'm happy in my inner tube where it's two feet and my feet are touching the bottom with my squeaky toy and my drink, you know? Leave me, Lord, to the lazy river going round and round in endless circles going, oh, this is life. When God so often is going, no, there's bigger water. You gotta come and follow me, I dare you to open your heart and approach God as the wave rider today because I've become fully convinced that God makes waves. God makes waves. God likes to create waves. No, not a storm, for, not, not a chaos, but big water that God likes to send our way and invites us to step out of our comfort zones our lazy rivers of life, inviting us to come and ride with him. I promise you this. God is sending you waves. And what he invites us to do is to learn how to discern them. Because I can't tell you much about surfing firsthand. But I've watched the surfer movies more than I ever should. And if I've learned anything from this collective body of wisdom, it's that every surfer needs to learn to read the horizon. Because when a wave is under you, it's already too late. No, you got to see it coming from out there. If you want to ride that wave, you've got to learn to see it ahead of you. You've got to be watching going, is that it? Is it coming? Wait, wait, wait. That looks like it's materializing. Wait, what is God sending? What is coming my way? So that you are prepared and poised. So that already by the time it's coming upon you, you're already in momentum, ready to ride. How often I am so guilty. How about you? Of just bobbing in the water of life. Listlessly enjoying and looking around. And by the time God's wave has hit, it's already passed. Because something else I've learned from this collective body of wisdom as well is that once the late wave has passed, it's too late. There's no hope of catching it. There's no hope of paddling after it. There's no hope of going do-over. Oh no, more waves may come to be sure. But no two waves will ever be exactly the same. And I got to tell you, one of the hardest things for me in my walk with God is when I think of all the waves that I've let go by. The opportunities that God has sent me. The things that in hindsight you go, these were calls of God. Moments of God, things sent by God. Things sent that, if 
I would have just rode them. Oh, what life would have been. What God would have done in me. What I would have experienced. How I would have developed. How I would have grown. How I would have connected with him on the water in a way I never could from the shore. Make no mistake, big water's scary. There's that moment, right? And we've all been there. Where we're in something that's outside of our comfort zone. And we have that moment and it's almost a split second, isn't it? Even if time stands still. Where we have to decide, am I going to act or am I going to delay? Am I going to jump on this or am I going to hesitate? It's a moment of truth. And how often I've done the latter. I've waited. I've hesitated. I've let it gone by. I let my fear of getting rocked on that big water, that fear of wiping out, that fear of smashing the coral reef go with the metaphor, okay? Keep me from the joy and adventure and delight of riding what God was sending me. You know, some of the hardest things in my life have been looking back, looking back with regret over waves I've recognized and willingly chose to miss. And I know I'm speaking to some of you here right now. I know some of you know exactly what I mean, that you can look back and identify things that so clearly seemed as something God was sending you. And you let it go by because you were too afraid to ride it, because you weren't prepared for it, because you weren't watching because you chose the lazy river over the big wave. You know, when I think of those moments in my life, there's few things I wouldn't do to go back and have the chance to to try that wave again. And one of the hardest things for me to realize is that those waves have come and gone, never to be repeated again. Oh no, God certainly will send more waves and more opportunity, but that wave, that wave that I could have rowed, it's gone. And having to live with the consequence or the choice that I've made, that's what scares me. It's knowing that regret and being afraid of myself because I know myself well that I might wake up one day and go, Lord, I lived a life of letting waves go by. As scary as big water is, I really think I would rather wipe out trying. I'd rather face getting rocked on that wave than living with that kind of regret. And I think it's only those who have tasted that regret can know what I mean. Here are the skies. God sends waves. He sends waves into each of your life things that upset the stale, still water. Things that are frightening and scary and exhilarating. Things that seem bigger than you can handle. But out there ahead of you, saying, come on, come on, grab the wave. 
Come ride with me. And you may get rocked. I can't promise you won't. You may wipe out. I can't promise you won't. You may even get hurt. But I promise what God will do in that is worth it by far because our God is a God who treads the waves. Ride him. Ride him. Whoever you are, ride him. Learn to see the sets coming in. You know, here at FOF, we've been in the water for some time trying to discern on the horizon the waves that we hoped God might be sending us. You know, you can't create a wave. You can't create it. You can only ride it when it comes. And those of you who have been with us in the water for, for a while now, you know we've been looking, we've been trying, we've been, we've been looking, and things haven't developed. We've been looking and seeing, and some go, oh, that was a monster. And even let a couple go by, we think God is sending us another wave. Another wave, and that's what we're going to be talking about later today. Look, my point in this message is not to go through our building project, not to go through the timelines and the details and the use of space and what it can accomplish and what it can do. We've talked about that, and we'll talk about it more at noon today. No, I want to get more transcendent with that into the why. The bigger picture of it all. And I never want what the waves that God is sending the Fellowship of Faith organization to be a substitute with the waves that God is sending you. Because I promise you, he is. And they're out there. And if we as a church, if you as a person can adopt a posture to keep looking on the horizon, saying, Lord, what are you sending me? Instead of, Lord, just save me. Oh, what God's going to do in you. Because what I've learned is this. People who surf the waves they always end up in a different place. You know, when God sends a wave, it's never like a cruise ship. You know, where it's the artificial, like, water just coming your way and you just kind of stand there in place with three guardrails around until you wipe out and lose your suit. You know what I mean? No, the people that surf the actual water, that wave takes them someplace. God wants to take you someplace. And God is going there because he's riding the wave. And he wants you to ride it too. Look, that's, a, that's my prayer for today. That's my prayer for you. And here's what I want you to do. I really mean this. And if I could even be so grand as to say, make this a posture of life, but start today. Start living from a position that doesn't fear the water, but welcomes it. Start praying, God, what wave are you sending me? And then open your eyes and look and see. Oh, and I tell you, you'll see wave after wave after wave. Start to materialize. Do it. He'll give you eyes to see, and when they come, dare to ride. We do that. We do that as a church, as a people of God. Ooh. Oh, what God is going to do. Welcome to First Wave. So I want to pray. I invite the man to come up and let them plug in, but I invite you to pray with me. Now, now as, as we often do here, I'm going to pray and I invite you to allow my words maybe to guide you in this, but I know there are some of you sitting here or watching right now who are wondering about a particular wave. You're struggling with it. You're, you're, is, is it it? And you're afraid, or, or you've been rocked, or you've been hurt, or you don't dare to open your heart and ask God about that today. Pray with me. 
Lord, we come before you as, as people in the water. Lord, you make waves. You upset the status quo. You're not content to leave us as we are because you know there is so much more joy, so much more growth, so much more experience out there that you want us to share in with you. Oh, Lord, may we ride the waves with you. May we see you on the water. May we see you on the water inviting us to come out and ride with you. I want to pray for the person sitting here today. I want to pray for that person who right now is in that place going, Lord, what do I do? Guide them, God. Give them wisdom, but give them courage. Courage to serve. Knowing, God, that you will be there, and even if they get rocked, oh, Lord, what a ride it'll be. I want to pray for the person who's sitting here or watching today who's filled with regret because they let the perfect wave go by. And now they're stuck in the water bobbing. Letting wave after wave go by because they're filled with such sorrow over the one that got away. Forgive us, God. Forgive us not only for letting those ones go by, but forgive us for fixating on what has passed, that we miss what is present. Help us charge the water again today. Oh, Lord, we know it'll be big. Help. We know it can be scary. Help. We know that you're good. So God, may we ride with joy, trembling, determination, excitement, and delight. Send the wave, O oh God. Amen. And I want you to hear this. God the water walker loves you so much that he invites you to ride with him again and again. Ride in his grace, in his power, and in his strength. God bless.